Yeah, I'm pretty freaking stoked with how this looks. I don't have to set up any lights. Move that up. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay, what's up, crew? Welcome to another video. My name is John Connie, aka Big Man Syndrome. And I wanted to do a really quick video uh, to follow up with the subwoofer box that I built for the Evo. I ended up making a change, not last minute, but like as I was building it, I just felt like I wanted to simplify in the moment and get it done after failing the day before and spending a long time the next day uh, retrying. I just decided to get what I could do done and put in the Evo. Personally, I love the sound of the build right now, but I also didn't do my original plan. My original plan was to create a box that had a windowed section so that you could see that chonky magnet of the subwoofer. I even mentioned it in the video and I kind of mentioned that I changed my mind mostly because of what I just said. Plus, I think I was a little concerned with using plexiglass in a box like this uh, to where it might affect the sound or I was going to you know, ruin this second attempt and then have to do a third attempt. I had some extra scrap wood so I decided, you know what, I could probably at least build what I had originally planned out. And that's what today's video is gonna be. And instead of just building the box, uh, kind of like I did last time and sort of nerdily trying to explain box theory, building, blah, 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 because I'm not really that good at that. I kind of wanted to just give an entry level guide on how to build a subwoofer box, super simple subwoofer box from scratch. Basically right here on the side, I have my pile of pieces that I'm gonna end up using for the box itself. It's essentially the same size box, but I changed the port size. I uh, got a comment in the first video that I should go with a bigger port volume and area. So I went with three inches. Let's see how that sounds. I did have to reduce the length of the port because it, it would have butt up against the magnet of the subwoofer. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna add the windowed aspect to it. Uh, and then I'm gonna spray paint the inside of it so that the port is black and the inside of the box is white. That way when I do put purple LED lights or if I wanna do like an RGB or do something different, it'll have a bright space to illuminate. So before I go through the pieces and talk about my method of creating a simple box, I wanted to talk about some of the tools that I truly, truly recommend. If you're trying to get into box building and you wanna do it uh, as a hobby more often than just one subwoofer box for yourself, but I mean, honestly, even if you're only gonna do one subwoofer box and you have the budget, get the right tools. In my opinion, this is gonna save you a ton of headache. It's gonna save you a ton of time. Uh, I wish I did this way earlier. Like this, the last subwoofer box I built is probably the 20th one I've built in my life. And this is the first time where I used, personally used my own uh, table saw. I've had friends with table saws and those boxes came out great. But trying to build it with a circular saw or a jigsaw alone is just not gonna go well. Oh no, we died. Ain't nothing to it but to get back to it. The tools that I recommend for somebody who wants to get into DIY sub box building uh, whether it be a hobby or you simply want to just get a box done for your vehicle or vehicles. Uh, even if you plan to only do one box and you're done, uh, done, I would suggest getting a table saw. A table saw is basically table stakes in my opinion because it is going to give you the straightest cuts possible with very, very, very little room for error. I've actually had the, the wood wiggle a tiny bit and I'm like, that's probably gonna be a shitty cut and it's perfectly flat. Like something about the table saw just really, really takes guesswork out of it. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I've banged my head against a wall trying to use a circular saw and ended up just going to find somebody who has a table saw. <sighs> Next thing I would say is going to be a speed square. This is an incredible tool for multiple reasons because a part of my process here, which will hopefully help some of you out there when building your boxes and getting things perfectly straight and aligned. This section here of the speed square is you can use that with this flat edge to create a uh, perfectly straight line up to three and a half inches on this one. And then they make bigger speed squares as well. Not a must have, but it's definitely something that will speed <laughs> some of the process up. And then the other, I would say mostly must have because it, it's gonna save you time and energy trying to keep things together is one of these guys. It's a 90 degree angle 
uh, clamp so it keeps your boards at a 90 degree angle while you glue and nail them or screw your pieces together. I have two of these so that I can uh, double the work on two different sides and it makes it a lot easier to get through the build. And then of course, a sharp pencil is gonna be super helpful as you make uh, some of the sketches on your pieces. And then a simple tool that you, you're gonna need uh, for just any shaped uh, subwoofer is gonna be your jigsaw. Shit, actually, there's a lot of tools and I keep forgetting. <laughs> jigsaw so that you can cut out the hole and then something that I'll recommend, which is huge, like you can obviously buy templates, but those can probably get pretty expensive. And I mean, unless you're planning to open a shop or do this often, it's gonna probably be either expensive or just, you know, things that are gonna be in your garage for no reason. Grab a, a good straight edge, a ruler, and then drill a hole at the one inch line. Look up the diameter of your subwoofer mounting hole, and then you're gonna drill a hole halfway to the that point. So let's just for sake of simplicity, an eight inch sub, you would go four inches deep here and then you would screw this into the face actually you would go five inches since you're one inch in you would screw the center one into the part that you're going to make the hole and then you trace a circle and it's going to give you a perfect circle every time so this i highly recommend because this over the years has been huge for me with all the different subs and then for assembly you're going to need some wood glue and then you can either use uh, drywall screws or whatever type of screws that you feel like using if you're going to use screws i will heavily recommend doing a pilot hole and then using the inset drill bit that will give room for the head uh, unless you have self-tapping screws which i would be careful with those because they'll go straight through some especially half inch they'll go straight through the mdf and then you'll end up with a box that you can't use or a wall that you can't use personally i don't really love screws i've had too many instances where it'll bulge the wood itself and then alternatively from screws you can use nails and I have a pneumatic Dewalt uh, nail gun with a pancake compressor. This has been huge for me because you can load a bunch of nails in there and you can line things up and just bang, 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 bang pretty quickly. And to me, it's the fastest possible process and it's very strong. Let's talk about the process. So when you do a basic box, measurements tend to be a lot easier. And I like to work with the 12 by 12 by whatever measurement, because that's always gonna be the easiest. Running through these, and then I also have these, I like to mark my pieces of wood so that I remember exactly which one this is. So like, this is the long wall of the port in the back. And then we have the short wall here uh, of the port that will end up like this. I've also gone and reminded myself that I want to paint this. So this is gonna be a black side which will be inside the port itself. So when you look into the port, it's gonna be completely dark. And then a white side, which if you look into the window that I'm trying to do, you will be able to see the walls. And then we come to these pieces. So this is top and bottom. And what I've done is given myself a guide on where the port is gonna end up. This does two things for me. It gives me a visual indication of where the port is. And then when I go to nail, as long as I line things up, which I, I'm gonna do this on, on the other side as well. Right now it's blank and I forgot to do it, so I'll do it later. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. That way I can place the port underneath this piece and then I can look underneath and adjust the port so that it's within the lines that I drew underneath and then I know exactly where it is here and I can just send the nails really, really quick. Having done this once or twice, it is a huge time saver. Um, it takes a little extra time to, to obviously draw all these lines. It truly is something that's gonna help in the future. So this is the bottom, or no, this one's the top. The other one I just showed is the bottom. This one's gonna feature that window, which I'm gonna cut this out. And this is plexiglass, which I'll take the paper off. This will sit, I'm gonna use a router. That's what I forgot. I'm gonna use a router to indent the back side of the wood so that this will sit flush on the inside so there's no resistance for the subwoofer. Plus it'll allow me to seal it a little bit more around the edge without having to show some sort of seal on the front side. So from the outside, there will be a little bit of a bevel and I'll probably use a router bit to round that edge so that it looks super, super clean. And it won't be very big, it'll be a pretty thin bevel. This is where I thought uh, I had a little bit of questions in my mind of whether or not it was a good idea to do the plexiglass because I'm deleting some of the, the exterior piece of the wood 
and maybe reducing the structural integrity, which we'll see. It's ported, so there's not gonna be like this sealed, compressed air trying to like uh, escape. It'll be free flowing. Um, so it'll really just potentially change resonance, I guess. Too nerdy for me to truly understand. So same thing, this is the front because this will be the port and then a window here. And then the back is super simple. I only did the edge, which the rest of them, you do see the edge. As long as there's a piece of wood over here, you'll have a line that shows that so that you know how, because sometimes eyeballing a half inch is really, really difficult. So having that line there really gives you the perfect gauge to center the nail before you, you pull the trigger. And then there's two windows. And one more tool that I forgot to mention is the router. This is definitely a tool that you can either invest in or just skip because it can get expensive, uh, but it is a very, very useful tool. For the port of this one, since there's a face, one big piece as the face, uh, and then the port is behind that face, I can take the router, as long as I, I do a pilot hole really quick, I can take a router with a ball bearing guide and use that to push up against the walls of the port and the exterior walls and then get a perfect square cut out uh, for the port so I don't have to use a jigsaw and try to make it perfect with my hand. Uh, and it's a really, really clean edge. And then you can throw on the rounded edge, which then gives you that bevel, which is a super, super professional look, as well as a really, really clean space for the air to, to come out of the box. So a router is not necessary, but it is, wildly helpful in creating that final polished look for sure. I think that's all the tools. I really hope that's all the tools. I'm sure there's at least one or two more. So doing the math, the port volume is 0.43 ish and total volume was 1.86, I think, or 1.8 something, uh, with the net volume being 1.44. I think that are, those are good numbers uh based on some of like if i remember correctly about a month ago or so so really it's going to come down to how it sounds what's good about this box is if it doesn't sound good with the eight if it's too much volume and it kind of kills the base the mounting face is going to be big enough and spacious enough for me to put a 10 or i can even go all the way up to a 12. a 12 might be a, pushing it a little bit and the volume might be a little bit small for a 12. Uh, but if I really want to, I can grab an L7 uh, 10 inch and throw it into here. Won't look as cool with the window, but who cares at this point? That's what's cool about this being one, almost a, uh, one and a half in net volume and a huge port. All right, so that's enough sitting here and talking. I'm gonna switch the camera to a time-lapse version and I'm gonna build this box. Whoa. I think I got a vendetta. Oh, now they call me, I seen her. Yeah. All of those times getting severed. I told them all I can let up. They ain't not tired of me never. Yeah. Give me a shot and I, oof. I swear I shoot like Beretta. Back and I'm better than ever. Whoa. I think I got a vendetta. Oh, now they call me, I seen her. Yeah. All of those times getting severed. At this point, you have a working box, and if you're lazy like me, you can just run the speaker wires through the port, or you can be super professional and grab a terminal. That'll add a polished look to it. You could also carpet the box at this point. Uh, for me, I'd like, I kind of like the look of raw MDF. I might paint it later, uh, depending on how it sounds. Like If this one sounds really, really good, I'll probably put some sort of uh, fabric on the top of it. Uh, I haven't really done a I could not seem to win when it comes to my equipment. I, I've never really had a successful box exterior finish look. Really depending on how this ends up sounding will determine what I end up doing with it. Hopefully it sounds amazing with the extra little bit of volume plus the bigger port. I, I know a bigger port definitely does make a difference, but I also watched a video recently in trying to plan this that port size and dimensions really doesn't have the biggest effect on final output. There's really just a few specific things that can make the impact, and I believe it's port length. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, you're awesome. And if you've been around, you know what to do. Like this video, leave a comment, share this video. Those are the ways that help grow the crew. And if you're not a part of the crew yet, consider subscribing. We've got a lot of content coming down the pipe. 
I've got an Evo, I've got an M3, I have a Tundra. We got Justin who has an E36 also in uh, LA. And then I've actually got two people on the street who have really killer cars. One of them actually just got a second Mustang and he's planning to do a lot of swaps with it. And then we have a friend up the street who's got a wagon, which is I guess a rare Cadillac wagon. Super cool. We'll be bringing them in on some stuff. And then I have a couple of other people who have cool cars that I plan to do some sort of walk arounds and interviews with them about their cars and their plans. So plenty of content to come, uh, really excited about that. So I hope that you decide to join us, but regardless, go spend some money on that money pit.